Love as a state of consciousness is our natural essence and our journey in this lifetime involves coming home to ourselves, coming home to this remembrance that love is actually the essence of who we are. And we do this by overcoming the illusion of separation that is created by our beliefs and conditioning. Have you guys seen these like coffee talk style videos that people are doing nowadays. The girl sits down with her coffee and before she starts whatever the chat is about, <laughs> shares what her coffee is. And I feel like it's never a normal coffee. It's never just like, and this is my black coffee. She's just always very extra. Oh, this? Oh yeah, this is my organic camel milk latte. It's actually like, home um, milked by a local shaman. Yeah, it's like really, it's really spiritual. Yeah, what is yours? Is it Starbucks in a to-go cup? Mm. Okay, I'm joking, clearly. <laughs> I hope you can tell that I'm joking, but we're just gonna have a little laugh together. Maybe we'll start doing these coffee chat things. I don't know, probably not. In today's video, we are talking all about self-love and we're going to go about this in a little bit of a different way from a little bit of a different perspective than what the conversation of self-love often looks like. Of course, there's so many different thoughts and opinions and beliefs out there, but oftentimes it ends up just kind of being tied back to self-esteem or self-compassion or self-care and various self-care practices, right? Like taking bubble baths and romanticizing your life and lighting candles and setting boundaries. And all of these things absolutely can be an aspect, a piece, like a piece of the puzzle of what supports us in embodying self-love, but it actually goes so much deeper, so much deeper than that. And so that's what we're gonna get into. And this is actually going to be a six part video series. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what self-love is, what self-love is not, and also what it is that is really blocking us or preventing us from embodying and from really being in this space of self-love. Self-love is a term that is very often misunderstood and there's a lot of other words and phrases that are kind of thrown out that people might equate to being the same as self-love. So at its best, maybe people think of self-love as being self-compassion or self-esteem or self-care. And at its worst, it could be thought of as pride as arrogance or even narcissism. But self-love goes so, so, so much deeper than all of this. So let's talk first about what self-love is not. Self-love is not, first of all, an emotion. And this might surprise you, but love in and of itself is actually not an emotion. Emotions fluctuate with changing experiences and environment and situations. Love is, well, we'll get to this, <laughs> but love is not something that fluctuates with our circumstances. Love is not a changing state. Self-love is not egotistical. It's not selfish. And self-love is also not confidence in every single moment. You know, it is not toxic positivity. It's not feeling good all the time. It's also not just another task to be checked off to be achieved. And honestly, this is how I used to look at the concept of self-love. For most of my life, I thought that it was something that was like just out of reach for me. And for some reason, I just struggled with it so much, I just couldn't achieve it. I couldn't attain this elusive concept of self-love. And I was trying so hard to reach it through the practices and through the things that I thought would get me to that point without recognizing that it was inherent within me. So there, there was no reaching outside of myself. It took me so much, so many experiences, so much traveling, so much 
connection with myself, with something greater than myself, with others. It just took a lot of learning and a lot of life to get to the point where I realized that self-love was not outside of me. So if self-love is not any of those things, <laughs> then what is it? What is self-love? What is love in general? Real love. And this includes self-love because from a higher perspective, there really is no self. It's all connected. It's all one. So self-love, love is the fundamental energy that is the basis for all things. And I want to share with you a quote that I found. It was so beautifully putting into words this experience. Love is actually a fundamental energy that is the basis for all things. The energy that binds vibration into form. Universal and omnipresent, available 100% of the time, and accessible to anything and everyone. There is no need to seek for love, only to quiet the noise and allow yourself to open to it. There are people who trigger something inside of you that opens you to experience that energy and we call that loving someone. But you are experiencing the energy of love that is always and abundantly available within the very cells of your body. So this is why I say that love is not an emotion because it is a state of consciousness. It is your very being. It is the essence of who you are. It is the essence of everything. And to be in love means to be in that space of love, to be deeply connected to source, to consciousness, and to recognize that love that is within and without. And this love, this space is big enough to hold the entire spectrum of who you are. It's big enough for all of you. And so think of self-love as a returning home and witnessing within yourself the love that you inherently are. It is a remembrance that love is your nature. So it's not that you do or do not love yourself. These non-love feelings that you may at times experience, these feelings come from not recognizing, from essentially like losing the memory of who and what you really are and also not being present with yourself. And we'll get into that more in one of the next videos, but it is simply because you are feeling disconnected and that disconnection again is creating this illusion of separation from the love that is inherent within you. So sure, yes, we can practice self-love, of course, but it is more so that it is meant to be remembered and it is really meant to be embodied. And so the question now becomes, what is it that is really blocking us from recognizing, from remembering this love inside of us. It is the conditioning and the belief systems. It is the stories that we tell ourselves. Your soul, your spirit, your essence was boundless. It was fluid. It was completely free when you came into this world. You were connected to your true essence of love and then you came into this physical body. <laughs> and from the time that you are in your mother's womb, you start to take on things that are a little bit disconnected from this source of love. So whether that is your mother's nervous system that you actually start to take on bits of when you're in her womb. And then as a young child, you start to form these different beliefs and conditioning based on your experiences. This could be through your parents or caregivers. It could be through peers. Um, friends or other kids at school. It could even be through traumatic experiences. But through these internalized messages, we start to take on different forms of programming, different forms of conditioning. And these belief systems are what actually lead to the things like the negative self-talk, the distorted self-perceptions, comparison, judgment, unrealistic standards for ourselves, limiting beliefs, a constant, need for external validation, fear. So I'll give you an example here. Let's say that a child is always being told to be quiet, right? Maybe this child is really excited and they love to express. And so their parents or their teachers uh, are always telling them that they need to be quiet or they're always shushing them. 
And that child may actually grow up having formed a belief system that their, their voice is not meant to be shared, that they are not worthy of expressing themselves. Or let's say that your mom used to always make comments about the fact that she was ugly or you know she wasn't skinny enough, she was too fat or she didn't look good in her clothes. And so you might take on this belief system or this distorted perception about your own body, your own self image, or the fact that you are not worthy in, in your own body. You know, depending on what your parents' beliefs were about money, maybe you grow up thinking that your worthiness, your success is based off being financially wealthy, or maybe the opposite. You know, maybe you've been raised to believe that money is bad and only bad people are wealthy. And so you are stuck in this scarcity mindset and you're having a hard time achieving a financial success because you believe that that would make you a bad person. And like I said, it could be a traumatic experience that puts your nervous system into a state of fear. And so you don't feel safe in your life moving forward. There's just so many things that can happen as we are children that implant these belief systems into our mind and it becomes a part of the subconscious. It becomes a part of our story and a part of who we are until we make the conscious choice to shift and to change that narrative. So all of these structures, these narratives, these egoic beliefs, they really occupy the mind and they even occupy the body because everything gets stored in the body if it's not released. And this is what creates this illusion of separation from love. Almost like if you think of a mirror, when the mirror is clear, you can clearly see yourself. You can clearly see who you are, but when there is like a smoke or a fog on the mirror, you can't see yourself clearly. And it's the same with all of these programs. We aren't able to clearly see the love that is who we are because of the fog, because of the smoke that has been created by these different experiences that have led to the belief systems. And this, by the way, this is why it is so much easier sometimes, or it feels so much easier to love others versus loving ourselves. It's because we have not attached all of these conditions onto other people. You know, all of these things that we've tied to ourselves and said, only when this happens am I worthy. And because of this, I'm not lovable. We haven't attached those things to other people. And so what we need to do is we need to wipe away all of the fog, all of the smoke, so that we can again clearly see ourselves. Because this is really a journey of coming home to ourselves, the practices are more of a support system to help us along that journey. They will support us in becoming aware that we exist in love. They will support us in reconnecting with and embodying that love. These practices are what support us in removing that smoke from the mirror and being able to again, see ourselves clearly. This is why I absolutely love this quote by Rumi because I feel like it just it just touches on that so perfectly. It's the quote where Rumi says, your task is not to seek for love, but simply to seek and find all of the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. And overcoming these barriers requires challenging and overcoming and shifting these conditions, these belief systems. In the next couple videos, we are going to go through these different practices. We are going to cover awareness and mindfulness, presence and being present, holding space for yourself, reprogramming your subconscious mind, connection and how connection will bring you back to the recognition of who you really are. And then finally, loving and intentional action. This is such a huge piece because we can do all the manifesting and dive into all the feelings, but we have to also be taking the right intentional and loving action. Hope you're excited to dive into each of these practices with me for us together to really get back to this remembrance, get back to this space of recognizing the love that you are. Hit subscribe so that you are notified when those videos are released. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.